listening to the Soul Ascension Show with Angel Healing Founder Callista. Welcome into our sacred space where you can truly be your radiant self. It's time to get inspired, to get creative, to be who you came here to be. Rise and shine. All is here for you. Hi beautiful souls and welcome to the Soul Ascension Show with me your host Callista. It's so good to join you once more for our fortnightly podcast coming to you on a different day. The reason being because I gave birth to Rowan last week, my beautiful magical son who is uh, either feeding or pooping or (laughs) wanting a lot of time so I haven't really had the opportunity to do the podcast the last couple of days so thank you for being patient and patience really is one of the themes of today because we're working with the earth elementals whose gift to humanity is one of patience, one of balance, one of trust, one of faith and also of healing and we're going to be talking about the nature of healing today as we bring forward the earth elementals beings of nature that lay the foundation for our planet and that also bring integrity to our own being. And as Rowan's namesake suggests, uh, he is very much connected to the tree spirits who we will be connecting with in this podcast, as well as perhaps the fairies and the gnomes and the earth dragons that may also appear because there's many different types of earth elementals that exist. And hopefully over this series, this five podcast series, when we'll be looking at the elementals, you will deepen your connection with our nature friends and be able to perceive them at a greater level than perhaps before. In this podcast, I'll be sharing how the earth elementals can support your physical body. And with the assistance of the tree spirits, We will be taking you into a very special soul immersion journey for your health and well-being at this time. But before we do that, beautiful friends, let's get ourselves nice and cosy where we are. Inviting you, if it's safe to do so, if you're not driving, to close your eyes. And just to take a few moments to breathe. Breathing into your beautiful body as your stomach expands outwards. Holding. And then releasing your breath deeply. Breathing in once more, letting your stomach expand. And breathing out deeply, letting go. Letting go of all the events of your day, where you've given your energy to people, to things, to locations, just drawing back your presence into your body, breathing in, breathing out, fully arriving into this moment. Feeling yourself grounded into where you're sitting or laying. Stable, strong, secure. Feeling into the energy of the earth, what that means for you. And imagining that you're sitting in circle with the many thousands of souls who tune into this podcast, either live or in retrospect. See yourself sitting in a beautiful circle with our knees so close that they're touching. Your hands are extended out and meeting with a beautiful soul on your left and your right. And we're all coming together from different backgrounds and cultures yet there's a common theme of expansion and joy and love that weaves through us, that connects us all together as we open up our hearts and minds to absorbing the information that is now ready to be evolved regarding the earth elementals, regarding your path of healing, your path of ascension, where you are at this time. And into our sacred circle, 
we invite consciousness of the earth elementals, that of divine love, to bring forward their gifts, their presence, their being, into this space now. And so it is. And you may see beings, tree-like, tall in stature, or small, with wings fluttering in and around our circle. Butterfly beings, pixies, gnomes, dryads, elves, as they come forward to join our party, to join our circle. And we ask that the overlighting divas, that look after all the earth elementals like angels, to also come forward and be a canopy of divine love, to shower us through this podcast, ensuring that everything that comes to us and through us is only of the highest and best divine light and love. And we ask the presence of Mother Earth to also be here, to bring forward your ancient wisdom, your nurture, your support, to come through me, bring through your words, your learning, your knowledge, for all of us here, for our highest and best at this time. Thank you, and so it is. Taking a long, deep breath in, breathing in your brethren that are here, and breathing out. Inviting you now to open your eyes, friends, or just keeping them closed as we continue with our podcast. Talking and discussing and bring forward the earth elementals, beings of nature that exist in the ground below us, in the mountains around us, in the hills and the landscapes, and in every crystal, flower, plant and tree. These beings from the element of earth are concerned with the physical well-being of the planet as well as they help to maintain the balance of our physical body. And as you may saw in the meditation, they can range from very small in stature like the little flower fairies whose role is to maintain the colour and vibrancy of flowers. Or they may be big, huge like earth dragons whose nature is to transmute fear-based projections and perceptions from the physical planes of the planet. Really, in truth, like all elementals, their form represents their role and can give us an indication of their function and purpose here on Earth. All elementals are an extension of source energy, just like humankind. So, They see that their classification, their titles are not important. It's really us, it's mankind that try to over-conceptualise who the elementals are rather than just allowing themselves to have a direct experience of them, which is the true knowledge, isn't it? To have that direct one-to-one interaction, that brings forward the knowing as to who the elementals are rather than reading about them and trying to class them into types because they don't see that their roles are different to each other or put that more accurately they don't see that their roles are more as important as each other they know that they're different but they see themselves as equal to each other because their combined aim is to maintain balance the homeostatic balance of the earth And they're happy to work alongside humanity who are also open to this beautiful path of service. The earth elementals among all the elementals tend to manifest more as physical beings. And sometimes they can choose to manifest as a colour, an orb, an energetic streak of light like I was talking about in the last podcast as my fairy guides manifest. But sometimes fairies can manifest not as the white uh, and coloured winged form, as fairy tales suggest. Sometimes they can shift more and into their truer physical form, which is where they have dark, slanted eyes, um, exaggerated or very sharp features, long, slim bodies. And this is probably why many 
many choose to see fairies as, as their softer version, as the fairy tale sweeter version rather than this um, beautiful slanted dark eyes, you know, that might be quite ominous to some people. But truly, elementals will always commune with your consciousness to determine what is the best and appropriate form to manifest to appear to you. And no matter how well developed you are in terms of your clairvoyance, you may never see a fairy, for example. But this should in no way discredit your natural ability to perceive them, rather they just show you that it might not be part of your path to engage with fairies through your vision. You might instead hear them with your physical ears, inner ears. You might sense them. You might just know of their presence when you're in and around nature. And we were talking about in the last podcast how the veils of separation, those perceived veils that many authors and elemental speakers have spoken about before, how the elementals are in a different vicinity, a different realm to us. It's really nonsense. They're not. They're very much here. They're right now. I'm looking at them right now as I look to the crystals uh, sitting on this desk and the beautiful roses that my partner gave me. The The flower fairies are here on those roses. The crystal being is right now here in that crystal and vibrating around it. They're not in some far off land or realm. They're just very, the vibration is finer, it's lighter, it's higher. So therefore we have to raise our consciousness and come into alignment with the source source and who we are to then perceive them. Now at particular times of the year, we have um, a little bit of a help with this, such as summer solstice and winter solstice. We are much more aware of who we are. We're much more tied to the energy of the earth. So we can perceive them. So this is a great time to go out to encounter the fairies, to encounter your angels, to encounter the energy of trees. A question that came forward was, how can I invoke the assistance of an elemental? How can I connect with them? really just by asking them. You don't need a prayer, you don't need a long invocation, simply as I said just coming into alignment. Whatever form that takes for you, whether you sing to get into that happy space to come into your heart, whether you dance, whether you meditate, whether you walk the earth with your bare feet to connect the energy of the earth, to to come into your soul and to who you are, whatever it takes And when you're in that moment of centred awareness, ask the elementals to come forward and you will have connection with them. It may be subtle at first because they do take time to trust mankind, especially the earth elementals because mankind has not been the (laughs) the fondest of friends to the earth, shall we say, that, you know, mankind has brought a lot of suffering to the earth, but the earth herself, Mother Gaia, does, does not hold judgment and she does not hold ego. It's only mankind that see it as suffering. She has had her own path of ascension, which we have helped to co-create. There's never any judgment. We're all evolving, just as she is, and we can certainly help the earth by helping ourselves to come into our alignment, to come into our joy every day. So to call in and invoke the assistance of the elementals, do so any time. You don't have to be out in nature. It certainly can help, but you can do so as you meditate and you can just bring in the energy of your guides. Now, each human being who's living a life right now will have an elemental guide. And your elemental guide, your earthly one, certainly, maintains the balance of your physical body from the assimilation of minerals to maintaining the vibrancy of your skin. And just as they help to colour the plant and crystal kingdoms, so too they can help to colour your physical life by bringing you so many blessings, by bringing you abundance. The earth elementals in particular, the fairies, do help humankind to align to their abundance, to their prosperity. Um, the gnomes and the leprechauns help with physical healing and I always know when the gnomes are around me because I'll stop when I'm outside a particular flower or a particular tree and I'll just breathe in 
I'll breathe in that frequency to the part of my body that's either signaling to me that it needs some help, that it needs some alignment, or I'll just breathe in and let the energy fall where it may. Now the gnomes teach us that every tree, every plant, every herb, every flower has a sacred geometric frequency that codes to every part of our body. So they know this and they understand that our cells know this too. We might not know it on a conscious level, but our cells, our organs, our tissue all seek well-being. They are all coded to well-being. This is like the factory settings of our being, is well-being, is health, is joy. Now, when we come out of a state, um, we come into a state of resistance, we obviously fall out of kilter and we need certain things to bring us back into that homeostatic balance. Now, the best way to come into balance is just allowing it through our thoughts and creating the feelings, the feel-good feelings to bring us back into alignment. But sometimes we need a little bit of help. So just going out into nature and breathing in the different frequencies of the plants and the trees can be so cathartic and so healing. And you can try this for yourself when you're outside in your next nature walk. Just let yourself be open to whatever is highest and best for you to attune to and to breathe in. If there's lots of colours, if there's like a selection of flowers around where you are, let your gaze just cast over these colours and say to yourself, what's highest and best for me to breathe in, to acclimate to today? And it's the most cheapest form of chakra therapy <laughs> that you can get just by going outside and breathing in the colours of the flowers. Um, I like to do this when I'm in the florist or the supermarket, when I'm choosing flowers to bring into my house. I'll just ask myself, what is most healing? What's most empowering for me at this time? What's coding to my wellness at this time? And I'll pick flowers that match um, exactly what I need to bring in at that time. Our earthly friends also help to remind us to be patient. They are so patient. And if you've ever spoke to a mountain being, <laughs> like uh, the Cairngorms up here in Scotland. These are huge, big, majestic mountains with crystals and minerals within them. And any time I pass them on my way up to Inverness, I'll stop on that train and I'll just commune with the mountain beings. And they're very slow to speak. They're very slow and methodical and they take time with what they say and I'm even, even feeling myself really slow down as I just tune into their energy and they may not give you passages and passages of um, guidance and of words like an angel would. They might just give you one word, trust, faith, patience, joy. And that's all you need, just the vibration. And I love speaking to the mountain beings. They, um, they bring forward a lot of patience, just as much as the crystal beings do, or the energy of stones. They help to keep us patient, rational, grounded, especially in, term, in times of stress or in pain. Earth elementals help us to keep connected to our roots, to our ancient wisdom, they bridge um, the knowledge in our ancestry. They can bring that forward. And they also help to clear our bodies of anything that feels in disease or that feels negative. They help for our roots to be connected down into the earth to just clear anything that we're ready to let go of. They remind us that all states of disease or perceived illness in our bodies is preceded by our energy body. Therefore, illness is only our physical body's way of healing, which I love. It's our, it's our body's way of healing, not illness. They remind us to focus on wellness when we're in the state of disease, rather than being identified with what we feel that we have. For example, a couple of years ago, I aligned with Lyme's disease, and it was easy for me to talk about Lyme's disease, to talk to the doctors about Lyme's disease, to go into the symptoms, to bring that into conversations with my friends. 
then they brought me empathy or sympathy about that and we would continue to talk about the symptoms. They would continue to ask me about the Lyme's disease and how it was doing and how I was, how I was being affected by that. And the more and more we talked about it, the more I became labelled with having Lyme's disease. And the second you label yourself something such as I'm in stress or I have the flu or I have Lyme's disease or I have cancer even, you're giving in to that. You're identifying with that and you come out of your power. It's so disempowering to bring yourself in the state of disease because nobody wants to be in the state of disease, do they? Nobody wants to be ill. Sometimes you can encounter people that absolutely love to revel in the density of where they are and they love to moan and groan about their many aches and pains. I I understand this. I've been one of these people before and I certainly have people around me still like that. Um, I love them regardless, but that's where they are in their journey. But it's not helping them. And the Earth Elementals remind us of that. They say to us, if we want wellness, to vibrate wellness, to focus on where we want to be, of where we want to, how we want to feel, rather than being in the density of symptoms, rather than continuing to identify ourselves with labels, because these labels keep us in a state of disempowerment. We cannot be in the state of wellness if we continue to focus on the disease. So by attuning to the earth elementals, in particular what's coming forward is, who's coming forward is the gnomes. The gnomes are great teachers here. Um, they can really help us to release the resistance that we've built up that have caused us to align with whatever we're identifying as a disease or an illness even a cold and flu. You know, I've met the most empowered human beings, the greatest of teachers, but the second they get the flu, they say, oh yeah, I caught that from, I caught that from my sister, or I caught that from my, my brother, um, and that's just the way life is. And they become totally disempowered. They, they don't realize that they have aligned themselves with the flu in order to release something, resistance from whatever part of their body is needed to clear, that's why they have came into alignment with the flu. It is their body's way of healing and letting go, not um, illness and disease. So it's just this shift in perception that's needed. And this was this shift in perception really helped me to clear myself of Lyme's disease. And as I said to a friend uh, this morning on the phone who was asking me about Lyme's disease, actually, as it happens, she's got a client an elderly client who has this right now and I said to her you can go on the, my YouTube channel and you'll find me talking about the herbal regime that I went on to clear my bodies of, of the limes but there's a little caveat here tell your friend to line up their energy first before they take the inspired action through pharmaceuticals, through herbal remedies, through working with the trees, they have to have their energy lined up to come into the belief that one, they can heal their body, two, not to focus on the illness, but to focus on the wellness and keep perpetuating the vibration of wellness. If they line up the energy first, then whatever inspired action they take will bring forward the clearing because they've already started that clearing process. And if we remember, as the earth elementals teach us, our cells, those trillions of cells in our body, are all vibrating consciousness. They're all source. They're all well-being. They're all in their joy. It's only our beliefs of what we think that causes us to change the nature of our cells. So if that is the case, then we can at any time change ourselves from perhaps being in a disease state to in a well state. We can do this. And often I would sit and I would meditate when I was clearing my body of limes. I would see my blood as being completely clear. I would see my sacrum and my spine where the limes was really affecting me as strong and really rooted. And when I was ready to take that inspired action, I would definitely go out and work with trees. I would put my body, the, the back, 
my back against the trunk of a tree and I would breathe into its energy and its roots and that really served me, it really strengthened my body but it got my mind in the right place as well. So if we're mindful in this awareness we will rarely or never, depending on our divine path, experience physical states of disease. And it took me a while to trust this lesson, but I must say from working with the elementals now since the limes, really working with them and, and embodying the illness is just our way of healing. I haven't got ill. I've been really well, even through the pregnancy and the birth of Rowan last week. Everything went really well. There was still medical intervention that I needed to have, but my mindset was clear. I was positive and therefore the experience that I had was positive. And any time that I do have a cold or something that I pick up, I welcome that because I realise that my vibration is shifting. It's ready to burst through an old ceiling into a new room, into a new room that's ready to be explored. And I realise that I'm just making way. As my body clears from the cold or flu, I'm just making way for the new albeit not in the most graceful of manners as I'm snorting and stiffening away, but I feel better and you do feel better. So I invite you to just shift your perception if you feel that you are in a state of disease, if you feel that you are identified with something that you would like to clear yourself of, focus on the wellness. Get your mind into that state of being first and then ask the earth elementals to come forward and to bring forward their gifts of healing, their gifts of higher understanding. Okay, beautiful souls, but I think what we'll do now is I have spoke quite a lot, so we will go for a quick break and when we come back I want to talk to you more about the nature of the tree spirits and take you on a beautiful soul immersion journey to encounter your own tree spirit guide. Okay, love and blessings. For powerful, on-purpose meditations, Visit vibedeck.com slash Callista. Active energy journeys to empower prosperity, joy, wellness, and love to flow freely in your life. For online courses and personal sessions, visit facebook.com slash Callista Ascension. Be who you came here to be. Arise and shine. Welcome back, beautiful souls. You're listening to the Soul Ascension Show with me, your host, Callista. And today we are discussing the earth elementals and how they can help us on our path of healing, our path of joy and ascension. And you just heard an advert for the many meditations that I offer through vibedeck.com forward slash Callista. And here you will find a lot of journeys with the dragons, with the fairies, with many crystal beings and even Mother Gaia herself, all extensions of the Earth Elementals, if you would like to go over to vibedeck.com and just have a look and see what meditations, what journeys best serve you at this time. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the energy of the tree spirits. You may have encountered the energy of a tree just by sitting underneath its canopy or perhaps by touching its branches or leaves or even hugging a tree. Maybe you felt the energy, the consciousness of a tree before and every tree in nature, I'm looking at them right now, we've got some rowan in the garden, we've got some um, other types of ash trees, we've got maple coming up, we've got huge big scotch pines that tower over all of them <laughs> in the garden. Each of them has their own medicine and this medicine we can tune in and tap into. When, we, when we've came into that path of alignment, when we're focusing on our wellness, trees can really help to get us there, to propel us into and in, back into our joy, back into our wellness. And there's many different types of trees there is um, silver birch trees which are fantastic at letting go and when I was over in the States the Native American tribes would share with me that they would write into the bark of a silver birch tree what they were ready to release 
painful memories, hurt, energies, attachments. They would write whatever they wanted to let go into the bark of the silver birch tree and that tree would absorb it and it would take it from them and it would do so in such grace and such bliss. The silver birch tree is also very much connected to the unicorns and if you do the unicorn healing course with me you will know that we talk a lot about silver birch trees and also copper beech trees. Both of these trees feed your soul. They bring forward the path and the remembrance of your soul's purpose which ultimately is joy but um, it could be joy through teaching, joy through writing, joy through being a mother. The beech tree is also very sustaining. It's um, a great tree to go to if you have just got over illness and disease and you're really starting to build up your immunity again to build up um, that sustenance in your body. I would advise you to go out and uh, seek a beech tree that calls you and just sit by that, sit under its canopy, hug its, hug its trunk, just be, be with that energy. Elm trees are fantastic for communication, for helping relationship harmony with yourself and others. Um, the papal tree, the tree that Buddha was famously sat underneath, um, is a path of enlightenment. So this tree exists in Asia, if I'm correct, um, not really here over in Scotland, but you can certainly still call in the vibration of the papal tree. Rowan trees, Rowan, um, very close to my heart, as you know, is the tree of mastery, a very old Celtic tree. Oak tree, you can attune to for wisdom. Maple trees are fantastic for moving through change and staying flexible. You could attune to a eucalyptus tree for balance. The ancient yew tree for regeneration. If you're looking for a more magical journey, you could choose hawthorn or juniper. If you're looking to align more to your abundance, I would call in the energy of the elder tree, especially the black elder tree. If you're looking for increasing your trust, you could attune to the date palm tree. The date palm, the famous tree that Mother Mary was supposed to give birth to Jesus under. Um, if you've read the Quran, that's what that teaches you. And the holy tree, one of my favourite trees for healing your heart. And the first time I ever encountered the holy tree, um, there's a huge big holy tree at my mum's at the bottom of the garden. And I had went through a very tough breakup, um, very tough breakup indeed, where I had met and aligned with my twin flame, my other half, and after two years, it was just highest and best for us to, to split up and go our separate ways. And I knew this on some level at the time, but at a very human level, felt very much alone, really the lowest I've ever felt. And that holy tree was such a friend to me. It really helped heal my heart. And I was guided just to go up to that holy tree. And obviously you can't get too close because it has the spiky leaves. But that taught me so much because sometimes the frailty of a human heart, we hold we hold so many barriers against our heart. And this holy tree was showing me through its spiky leaves that I had, I was doing that too. I'd built up barriers to not get hurt again after this really painful breakup. But slowly but surely, it allowed me to soften and open up my heart and open up that trust again. So if you feel that you're going through some heartache or you're carrying grief or old attachments, old attachments to lovers and you really want to be clear, you're ready to meet a new partner, go out and, and um, attune to the holly tree or in your meditation, call in the frequency of the holly and just breathe in. And wow, friends, it can really clear your heart. Now before we go into the soul immersion journey where you may encounter some of these trees for specific different things, I named just a few there and just their properties. When you're out and about, so not in this meditation, after the podcast, if you've got time to go out in nature or the days following, 
there's three ways that you can connect with trees that I was always taught. When you encounter the energy of a tree, they will either be receptive and happy for you to come under their canopy, to come up to the trunk, to even touch the trunk and hug the trunk. They might be really happy for you to do that and welcoming. They may be completely neutral. You may not get any sort of sense whether you should go up or not. And thirdly, you may get this sense of don't come any closer. Some trees are not there for our healing. They do not want to get involved with that at all. They are completely indifferent. <laughs> um, while other trees are very much open and welcoming to humanity. So when you're encountering tree medicine, do so with respect, beautiful friends. Um, before you go into that tree, whatever one you're guided to, when you're out on your nature walk, just take some time as you're looking afar from it to just study that tree, to, to open your heart, to say, I would like to come into your space. Can I can I do that? And if you get a yes, come into the space. If you don't, you know, you can still connect to that tree. You can look around its foliage, its branches, its trunk. You can start to see the line of its aura, the energy, and, you know, and just have that interaction from afar. But if it welcomes you, walk up to that tree You'll start to feel the aura of it as you come under the canopy of its leaves. You'll start to feel the energy of it below your feet through the, the many root systems as it connects down into the earth. And as you get closer and closer, just ask the tree if you can place your hands on its trunk. And if it says yes, doing that. Sometimes trees are so welcoming that it's okay for you to place your face on it. On it. Sometimes I even kiss the trees. Um, certain ones in, in our garden are really, really loving and affectionate. Others, like that beautiful rowan I'm looking at right now in the corner, uh, you know, is quite happy just to be as a tree and do its function, have its purpose here. Um, it's not really keen on humans going up to it, and that's absolutely fine. But the receptive trees, lean into them. Even place your your back against the trunk like we'll do in the journey coming up and just breathe yourself feel yourself merge into that trunk and um, and just rest for as long as you wish and it can be so healing for anything I've seen people uh, move from the vibration of cancer move from the vibration of sexual abuse move from the energy of heartache and really heal themselves through coming into alignment from shifting their perception to well wellness and then working with the energy of the trees to bring them back into their joy, back into their centre. So I'll now like to take you into a soul immersion journey to encounter the trees. So whatever you're calling in, whether it's health, letting go, trust, balance, wisdom, enlightenment, regeneration, abundance, just have that as your intention. What would you like to encounter today? What's your highest healing intention at this time? And then letting it go and closing your eyes. Taking a long deep breath into your body and breathing out fully. Breathing in and breathing out, letting go. Once more, big breath in and letting go. That's right. Just letting all melt away from you. Everything that we've been sharing and discussing, letting all that fall away as well. Finding yourself beginning to become more and more relaxed. Feeling now the part of your body that's most comfortable, most in ease at this time. And as you shine your spotlight into this area, 
Breathe into it and let that ease radiate up, down and across, through and in your body. As you lean into comfort. As you lean into the tra tranquility, to the balance, to the stillness that's here. completely supported by the earth below you, held by the energy of the divine through you and above you, letting any barriers drop, any masks, any stories, letting all drop so you can be here now naked, authentic, in your power, in your presence. A beautiful being of creation, one with all, one with source. And imagine that you're standing in a beautiful meadow adorned with colourful flowers, the buzz of the bees as they hover in and out, gathering their pollen. The sun shining down, enveloping your beautiful skin with its warmth. And smelling the heady bouquets of the flowers. Ah, it feels so good to arrive into this meadow. And as you look above you, Casting your gaze down from the sun, the clouds. Down you see a beautiful forest at the edge of the meadow. With many, many different trees of every species. And from the forest to where you're standing, a path opens up between the flowers. And you feel yourself guided to start to walk down that path towards the forest now. And with each step forward, you bring to your mind, to your awareness, that intention. And you let that intention seek out a tree that's highest and best for you to attune to, to lean into and receive from today. Coming to the edge of the forest, you begin to enter many, many different trees bowing down to greet you. You feel them bowing down to you as you walk through the grassy, mossy ground, the scent of which slightly damp but comforting and fresh. And it fills you with a sense of invigoration as you move through into the heart of the forest. And there will be a particular tree that stands out higher, taller than the rest, more vibrant, more energetic. And this tree beckons you forward. Come into its canopy as it slowly extends its arms, its leaves to welcome you, holding you in its embrace. And you breathe in the energy of the tree as you walk closer and closer to its trunk, placing your palms on the trunk of the tree now. Sensing its rhythm, that deep, steady, primal rhythm of the tree that beats like all the other trees in tandem with the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And as you tune into the beat, it slowly 
comes into rhythm with your own heart. Beating steady. Beating together as one. Resting now, sit down on the floor of the forest with the roots of the tree under you and the strong trunk against your back. Breathe into the strength of the tree that you have chosen. Let the awareness of the type of tree come to you that you have chosen. Breathing in. Asking that tree to bring forward your intentions and to bring forward the highest and best healing for you at this time. And wherever and whatever parts of you you wish brought back into wellness. Let the light of that tree flow to these areas now. Breathing in, breathing out. Letting all that doesn't serve flow through you, out through your body and down through the roots of the tree into the earth where all is safely dissolved and transmuted back into health back into light. And we ask the tree dryad, the elemental of this particular tree to come forward. And you may perceive the dryad as a tall, slim, beautiful being, perhaps cloaked. And we ask this beautiful dryad to come forward with a gift for you, to best serve your path of ascension right now where you are. Receiving this gift now. Accepting it wholeheartedly, unconditionally. Thank you, friend. Thank you, Dryad, for bestowing this gift to me. Taking one last deep breath in, breathing in the energy of the tree, the energy of the gift you received. And you'll find, if you put your hands in your pocket, a beautiful crystal. And this crystal is to give something back to the tree. To give back your gratitude, your reverence. So as you stand up gently now, feeling so good in your body, so good in your mind and your being and your spirit, place the crystal by the trunk of the tree. The dryad so happy with this exchange that they bow to you in reverence as you make your way out of the energy of the tree, back through the forest, back through into the meadow where you began your journey. Slowly coming back to the here and now as you move your fingers and toes. Taking a long deep breath in and breathe out. And I hope you enjoy that. Just a very short journey, but one that you can repeat at any time because this podcast is recorded so you can listen to that again and pause it to just extend that journey. And we brought in there the dryads. So there's a dryad, what's called a dryad, of every tree 
almost like the guardian of that tree. It can only go so far from the physical location of that particular tree and it looks after its um, longevity, its health, its um, the essence of the tree that you can connect to as well and we will be talking more I think about tree dryads in the next podcast when we talk about the air elementals, the fairies that's going to be the nature of the next show I think the dryads are going to come in because the first time I ever experienced the elementals after I reawoken my spiritual path uh, I encountered the energy of a dryad and a fairy at the same time and it's a really lovely story so I'll share that in the next podcast but for now beautiful friends we have let's see about 10 minutes left and some questions so I'm going to go to Nicola's questions which says um, which asks sorry could you please ask the earth elementals what I can do to help them in any way, please? Nicola, that's such a beautiful question and just shows your amazing open heart to to want to help them. You know what, I've, I put this to them um, before we did the show and they really said, if humanity was more in their joy, was more in alignment to who they are, that would be the greatest of help and assistance that we could ever have asked, we could ever ask for. That's all they're really seeking, Nicola, at the end of the day. They want humanity to remember who they are. As many of us are, we're starting to wake up to who we are, we're starting to come into alignment with our joy, with our path and purpose. And there's nothing really for us to do they would continue, if humanity was not here, they would continue to play out their path and purpose if there was no humankind here. (laughs) They really don't care, um, for want of a a better word, of course they care who we are, but they don't really need us for anything. They're very contained, they work really well together, all of the elementals, beautifully. There is, of course, some of humanity that are here that are destined to work with the earth elementals so how you can how you can best serve them is to really just come into alignment with who you are perhaps tell the elementals in your garden before you're going to cut the grass because the grass just isn't something there to mow every couple of weeks it's a living carpet of consciousness and it has so many habitats I'm looking outside in my garden right now and it has little clumps of mushrooms where fairies that's little fairy villages and that's where they exist so anytime you're about to cut the grass let them know that you're doing that so they can move so they can re-establish themselves anytime you go to cut the flowers especially cut down a tree or even you, you want to take a branch from a tree please ask that tree that you can do that if you don't get a yes please don't do it if you get a yes Give something in return, just like we did in that journey. Give a little crystal, give a stone, give your love, give your water. I know a beautiful friend right now, she might be watch, she might be listening, who sometimes pees outside. <laughs> she always says, when I pee, I'm blessing the earth, and I, I love that. So she, she uses, you know, part of her, con- it might sound a little bit crude, but she uses part of her being to bless the earth, and, you know, that's that's her flavor and that's okay so yeah just have some reverence have more reverence for the earth when you're bringing in flowers into your home ask the energy of the fairies to accompany them and when those flowers have wilted away and you're ready to recycle them uh, just say thank you just say you know thank you for all that you've brought me beautiful flower fairies thank you to the colour, thank you to the vibration that you brought into that home just having that reverence they really appreciate kindness the more that you can be kind the more that the elementals would really appreciate that Okay, Shelley asks how can we connect with them and help during the ascension process well we've really been talking a lot about that throughout the show best ways to connect with them is to shift your awareness from your mind into your heart and by doing so you will come to believe in the existence of elementals and this is the starting point to communicating with them 
Elementals will always know whether you believe in their existence or not. If they sense you believe and are open to communication, they will come forward to you. Understand um, that you are a spiritual being having a physical experience and not the other way around. And by recognising this, yourself as a divine being, you automatically remove any barriers to enjoying full communication with the elementals. You transcend the ego mind and with it, the many fears to elemental communication. And this will help you to see that you are part of the oneness of creation, part of the elemental kingdoms. Another way to connect is open your awareness to the beauty of nature, which naturally will attract the elementals to you. So when you're outside, lift your focus from your daily life, from whatever is going on in and around your mind, whatever you're dwelling on. Take your awareness away from that. Look to the sky above you. Contemplate the sky. Contemplate the colour, the clouds. Feel the air. Breathe in deeply. Notice how the air fills you. Look to the plants, the flowers, the trees around you. Feel their colours. Smell their perfumes. Be aware of the wildlife around you. Listen to the birds. Take in their joy. Really feel their freedom. Feel their energy as part of you. That there's no separation. If you do this, the more you will attune to be a child of nature. And the more the elementals will come forward to you. Care for the environment is also a big thing. So the elementals will naturally be attracted to you if you honour and love the world in which you live in. Switching to natural living can help. So switching your diet, your lifestyle, your skincare, your household products to more kind, you know, kind and loving to the environment, the better. You know, get involved in conservation, recycling, feed the birds, feed the birds in your garden, create a sacred space in your home or your garden to honour the elementals. Underneath the big maple tree in my garden, I've got a beautiful little fairy altar where I just give thanks to the fairies. And sometimes I'll go out and I'll put some white sage or I'll put the energy of the roses, like rose petals out there. And I'll just give thanks. Sometimes I might put some food out there for the fairies as well because they really appreciate that. Food is so vital to humanity. It's what we need to feel us. So if we're giving something that feels us to them, it's such a kind, loving act to do that. When you have a special sacred place in your home or your garden to honour the elementals, visit it daily or visit it as often as you can and just relax and be in this area. If you practice giving yourself healing or running running light into your body open up the soles of your feet and run that light back down into the earth Archangel Gabriel who works a lot with the plant and animal life said to me many years ago Callista any time that you visit water whether it's an ocean a loch a river please visualize it as golden please hold the vibration of gold within the water and I asked Gabriel why and he said that this is the highest vibration that we can bring into the world so anytime there is planetary you feel that you need to give planetary healing to a cause maybe to people in Nepal right now after the earthquake give them your give them your intention of that gold vibration don't be sad for where they are everybody has we, we never know what a soul has chosen for their given life and we cannot judge that as negative or positive. But w- what we can do is we can give our love, we can still be compassionate and the highest of compassion, the highest of love is to see an area affected by great change as golden and especially the oceans and the landscapes of our planet. And I continue to do that on a regular basis. So thank you. Big shout out to Archangel Gabriel um, for that one. We're coming to the close of our show, Beautiful Souls. So I just want to say thank you for listening. Next podcast will be all about the fairies. So please come and join that in two weeks time. But for now, thank you. Rise and become infinite. You truly are the one that you have been waiting for. 
You have been listening to the Soul Ascension Show with your host, Callista. Come join our community page at facebook.com forward slash Callista Ascension. Share your feedback to support others to rise up and shine. Be inspired. Be creative. Be your radiant self. All is here for you.